Cerebral EVM embolization started a long time ago. Classically, about 40 years ago, it was done by glue, which is an adhesive embolic agent. And then about 20 years ago, Onyx was introduced, which is a non-adhesive agent. <coughs> and all these, for a very long time, the treatments were done via an arterial approach. Uh, Onyx was a game changer when it was introduced, allowing uh, more embolic agent to be delivered into the arteriovenous malformation through a single injection, through a single microcatheter. But it, has the, it had the drawback of <coughs> refluxing of Onyx around the microcatheter, and which usually led to abrupt stoppage of the procedure and that you cannot continue embolization. So the, non -deta the detachable tip microcatheters were introduced in which there is a marker on the microcatheter that you can reflux your onyx until this marker, which is around two and a half centimeters in most microcatheters, until you form your plug, inject the onyx, and then when you detach the microcatheter, it detaches at this point, leaving part of the microcatheter in the artery. The advanced techniques we're using now <coughs> for embolization of AVMs is the pressure cooker technique, which we use through an arterial approach and the reverse pressure cooker technique, which we use for venous approach management of arteriovenous malformations. Both were described by Chapeau and the team in Essen, and the aim was to form an anti-reflux plug to obtain a wedged flow condition during injection of the onyx. So how do we cook? We need two microcatheters. The more distal is with the detachable tip for the injection of onyx. The more proximal is for the glue. And then we form an anti-reflux plug the way we do it here is that we do it with MBCA or Onyx and MBCA. So we inject glue first from the non-detachable tip to form the plug, and then we inject our Onyx from the detachable tip. And then we changed, we shifted, because sometimes injection of glue would occlude the tip of the detachable tip microcaster. We inject, we, s we shifted the technique into injecting some Onyx. As soon as it refluxes, we inject glue, and then we start injecting Onyx again from the sonic microcatheter. So the pressure cooker and the reverse pressure cooker, we need two microcatheters, the detachable tip and the regular, two embolic agents, glue and sonic. This is a demonstration of how we do it. First, we put the detachable tip microcatheter, and here we can see the tip of the microcatheter, and here the, the detachment zone. And then we put the regular microcatheter that we're going to do the plug with, and then we inject glue to form our plug, detach the microcatheter, so we are left with the detachable tip microcatheter and we already formed our plug, and then we start injecting onyx into the AVM all the way to the venous side, and then we detach the microcatheter at the detachment zone. Uh, some technical issues very fast that uh, some people think that it w this could be easily done using this, uh, the small scepters or the balloon microcasters, this is not true because you cannot navigate distally with them. The, you can never navigate with a balloon microcaster as distal as you can with a Magic 1.2 or a Sonic 1.2. Uh, placement of the first microcaster might take some time, but placing the second microcaster is usually much easier because the second microcaster sheeps very quickly with a sheeping technique to be placed beside the first one. Classically, using these techniques, we use Magic 1.2 French and the detachable tip Sonic 1.2 French. I will demonstrate some cases fast. This is a 22-year-old with an unruptured parietal AVM. Here we can see on the AP views and on the lateral views. This is how we do the pressure cooker technique. This is the first microcatheter. It was a Sonic. We can see the distal marker of the Sonic here and then the two other markers. This is the detachment zone. This is another view. We can see this is the tip of the sonic microcatheter, this is the detachment zone, and this tip is the tip of the magic. Here we can see some glue injected, and then you can, forming the plug, and then you can inject the onyx without reflux into the artery, and this was the end result of this embolization. This is a 44-year-old with a ruptured left temporal AVM supplied by temporal branches of the PCA. Again, here we can see the four markers, this is the distal tip of the sonic, this is the tip of the magic, this is the detachment marker for the sonic. Here we can see some glue injected, and then you can go forward with injecting the onyx until obtaining a complete cure for this AVM. This is the post-embolization angio. 
I just put this case to demonstrate that even with very small arteries, you can use this technique, the pressure cooker technique, placing two microcasters here. This is the thalamic AVM, and we use the pressure cooker technique in the small artery of Percheron. Here we can see the first microcaster placed, and then the second microcaster placed, pressure cooking and embolizing part of this arteriovenous malformation present in the thalamus. 13-year-old with a ruptured right temporal arteriovenous malformation. This is when we shifted to injecting onyx first. This is the first microcatheter here, and then injecting onyx, and then a very small reflux of onyx in the artery, and then here is the glue injected, the histoacrylipidole emulsion, and then we can continue injecting until obliterating the AVM, and we can also obtain a complete cure. This is the post-embolization angio. The other technique we're using now is the venous approach, where we use a reverse pressure cooker technique. And the venous approach is an approach that we use when the arteries are not feasible to embolize mm, due to the anatomical variation that there are no clear uh, arteries supplying the AVM, what we call on passage supply. Uh, this is a 32-year-old with a ruptured left parietal AVM. And as we can see here, this is the arteriovenous malformation. You do not see a feeding artery going to it. It's all on passage supply. And this is the draining vein here. On the lateral view, this is the draining vein going to the deep system. So we go through a jugular approach with an eight French guiding catheter that was placed in the straight sinus, and then navigating two microcatheters, the sonic and the magic, in the deep system till we reach the foot of the vein. And then here are the, the four markers of the catheters. And then we inject some onyx and then glue and then start pushing the onyx retrogradely into the arterial feeders from the venous side to the arterial side, as we can see here. And then we can get a complete cure of this arteriovenous malformation through a venous approach. This is the end result of this embolization. This is the last case I will show. It's a 13-year-old with a ruptured right parietal AVM. I did a first session for her, for the AVM, at the acute phase. Usually in the acute phase, you, do not, you, you cannot get all of the arteriovenous malformation. So because there was a hematoma, this is at the acute phase. We injected only glue. And on the follow-up, ruptured. this is the rem remnant of the AVM. We can see here that there is, again, a remnant of the AVM on, on passage feeders. And this is the draining vein to the deep system. If you try to embolize this AVM through the arterial side, you're going to kill a lot of brain, of a lot of normal brain tissue, and she will probably have a deficit as it's the parietal area. So again, we take a venous approach. Here we didn't have an eight French, so we used two six French guiding catheters. We placed them in the transverse sinus through a venous approach, and then we navigated a sonic and a magic. Here we can see the microcatheters in place on the lateral view here, and then this is the glue injected to form the plug. And then you can go forward with injecting the onyx retrogradely from the vein to the artery, leading to complete obliteration of this arteriovenous malformation. So advantages of pressure cooker and reverse pressure cooker, of course, it avoids reflux of onyx. It's, you can have a more forceful and controlled injection. It avoids premature abortion of the procedure. And this enlarges the range of arteriovenous malformations, which are amenable to endovascular cure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. 